This is Twit. And as for iOS 14, uh, the list of iOS updates and improvements, I, I scanned through it. It is overwhelming. Uh, and as, you know, being an iOS user myself, I'm beginning to feel more and more as though I barely know how to use the device <laughs> in my pocket. Oh, Leo, that's just crazy. I saw you jumping around uh, with oh, those which, widgets. Uh, yeah. With, yeah. oh my God, customizing things and locking things in place. And it's like, okay. I mean, it, it really, it's not the phone that Steve Jobs gave us no. all those years ago. The nice thing is you don't actually have to do any of that stuff. And right. the most important improvements are what you already uh, talked about. Same with Android, which is it now pops up warnings and lets you know what's going on. So, and you'll get that yeah. no matter what. So, I, I think, I think they're kind of on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and my, you know, my hope is that these things are discoverable, so that like it's kind of like it's like, well, you know, will it do this? Oh, look, it does, it does. and then yeah, you exactly. are able to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I I immediately pinned a few of my 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 most used uh, iMessage. Uh, yes, uh, in the messages con is nice. contacts. Yes, and I it's do. It's a little that. it's a little jarring. I'm not used to it yet. I it kind of you know every, every every time I bring up iMessage, it's like whoa okay. Yeah, uh, I've got these yep, heads, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. And when somebody <laughs> talks to you on those heads, you'll have a little pop up there, which is kind yep. of fun. Yeah, I have to yep. add you to it though. I'm put you in there. You've been texting yeah. me a lot lately. I, there's <laughs> been more going on. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay, so We're commiserating they, together. <laughs> they. Uh, yes. With iOS 14, they did something that I just think is brilliant. Uh, they have restricted access to the LAN. Apple noticed that while we're at home, very few of our apps have any need to access any devices on our home network. Hmm. All they need is to see our broader router and the wider internet. I'm sorry, our border router and the wider internet. Right. And, and of course, in this era of IoT local network access, this is apps, some apps certainly do have a need for local LAN access, but it is typically limited to one or two or a small number of explicit IoT interfacing apps. I think this is just brilliant. That it's they interesting. This. Um because Apple has a Wi-Fi backup, which they prefer you use to iCloud for your phone, but it must, it's not, it's not using, it's not backing up to, I mean, you can have, even on your computer, you can have Wi-Fi backup, but I bet you it's going through the cloud and down again. It might be, or maybe, or since, since the OS is in control, they're able to give this they could to say, themselves. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. If they wanted right. to. So, so here's what they realized that I think is so cool. Um, the major, the vast majority of our phones apps are entirely are entirely ignorant of what's going on on our home or our corporate LAN, and the wisdom of always and only granting minimal rights teaches that by default no apps should have local LAN access. They don't need it, and only those apps that actually require it should have it granted to them. So what that means is if an app is malicious if it gets you know onto the app store if, if it gets by apple scrutiny if it gets updated and then has some some behavior that would would that would otherwise have allowed it to get onto your lan and get you know be a far more devastating uh, consequence ios just says no that app won't have access unless there's a reason for it too so yeah a few will, but I just think that this idea of by default restricting apps to only the internet is a is a tiny, brilliant, you know, perfect solution for for increasing the the security of our systems. Um, also, back in 2014, when iOS 8 added, I guess you'd call it unassociated Mac address randomization. We talked about this six years ago. The idea was that it, it was an anti-tracking measure. Normally, a Wi-Fi radio has a an Ethernet Mac address. As we know, it's a 48-bit 
address. It's those, you know, the, the pair of hex digits separated by colons, um, which uniquely identify that piece of hardware. And the intention is globally 48 bits. Um, it used to be fixed. Then people started worrying that, well, wait a minute, you know, my phone is broadcasting my, my hardware radio Mac ethernet Mac address all the time, wherever I go, making it trivial, trivial to, to track me by my Mac address. So Apple said, okay, we're going to compromise here. As long as your phone ha has not associated with an access point, we're just, we're going to broadcast a random Mac because after all, who cares? It doesn't matter what it is. But when you associate with an access point, then we will revert to a, you know, the actual Mac for the device. iOS 14 has taken that a step further. If you look under Wi-Fi, Leo, uh, if you haven't already, uh, in your settings under the, the Wi-Fi your phone, your iOS device is currently associated with, there is a new switch turned on by default, private address. What that does is it synthesizes a unique Mac per access point. So, because the, the one thing that was still possible before was that when you associated with a Mac, then you would be giving that access point your actual Mac. He's back. So yeah, you, yeah. Yes. So you were still trackable to the degree that you associated with access points. Now, every different access point you associate with, that you, by default – iOS 14 will synthesize a unique Mac for that access point. Wow. So it's able to identify you uniquely, but you are non-trackable. Actually, it's exactly the way Squirrel works with Squirrel identities, right? Every time you go back to that same uh, website, Squirrel identifies you as unique uh, identity, yet every different site you go to gets a different identity. Right. So iOS has done that with our Mac addresses on our iPhones. Does this so that, confuse Mac address filtering? Well, that's probably why you can turn it off. Yeah. Is that it might be, for example, in an enterprise setting, they're they're doing MAC address filtering. Now, as we know, MAC address filtering is is weak because the MAC address is in the public is in public, it's, right? It's, it's broadcast. In, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why <laughs> we've never promoted Yes, we've never promoted it as anything really useful right. because a bad guy can see what MAC addresses are on the network being being accepted and just adopt one of them on the fly. So not much security there. But my so my so my guess is maybe in an enterprise you would you would, you might need to turn it off if, for example, privileges were granted to you uh, as you roamed among access points in an enterprise. There you might want to have it turned off. But it is switchable on a per network mode. So it, it's again they did the right thing. It's defaulted on all the time so everybody automatically gets this protection only if it causes a problem might you need to turn it off and i imagine that the provisioning system that enterprises have with ios devices would would allow them to do that just automatically yeah, too so yeah. very very cool again a nice piece of uh, new technology from apple as is what i call fuzzy location <laughs> services um, with GPS in our phones, of course, the phone knows precisely where it is, even which direction it's facing at all times. So it's possible for apps to be granted that same awareness as well. But as with LAN access, not all apps have the actual need for that, lo that level of location precision. Exact location can compromise privacy. And by the way, Leo, this is what I was trying to remember. It turns out there are there are ad networks which obtain the location of the user as part of their tracking. Mm -hmm. So talk about another, you know, another breach of privacy aspect. Um, so what Apple realized is that it's very much as with LAN access, not all apps have the actual need for that level of location precision. 
uh, exact location can compromise privacy. Um, so for, like, for, but there are some that do have a need for, for example, whereas driving, uh, a driving navigation app does need to know precisely where you are. A weather app only needs to know your proximate location within several miles of where you are to do its job. So again, they've, they followed this, this concept of, of, of not disclosing anything more that is actually uh, that is actually necessary and fuzzing your location for apps that don't need pinpoint location is now part of iOS 14. And again, bravo. Uh, 